If you have completed the first two modules, you should be fairly familiar with the many types of distinguishing features seen in a variety of microbes. First, let's take a look at the features that are unique to help separate the Neisseria genus from other organisms. Then we'll look at the differences between the two species of medical relevance. Both gonococcus and meningococcus are oxidase positive and ferment glucose. Though bacterial fermentation can sometimes help to differentiate between certain bacteria, Neisseria is particularly finicky and refuses to grow on most culture mediums. Fermenting is generally a low yield characteristic, so there should be many other significant signs to test and help guide to the possible infection of this bug. The cytochrome C oxidase enzyme, defined as oxidase positive on testing, allows Neisseria to use oxygen for energy. It is definitely not an anaerobe. This genus of microbes also possesses the IgA protease enzyme mentioned previously. Do you recall what the function of this enzyme is? IgA protease allows certain bacteria to invade mucosal tissue by inhibiting the body's IgA antibodies that predominate the area. Also, any individual with immunodeficiencies of complement need to be concerned with encapsulated bacteria, such as N. meningitidis. Without adequate quantity or quality of complement, the body is not able to opsonize encapsulated bacteria well, increasing the chance of disseminated infection. The LOS instead of LPS was mentioned in the intro to this module, but is simply a different variant of the LPS toxin that could be mentioned on a vignette. The PLI not only allows Neisseria to change genetic material with other bacteria, but can also act as an antigen detectable to the immune system. Stable antigens often make good vaccine components, although this doesn't seem to be the case with N. gonorrhea. Thayer Martin is a very specific agar used to culture Neisseria species. It's basically the chocolate blood agar, but with vancomycin, nystatin, colistin, and trimethoprim antimicrobials to prevent anything except Neisseria from growing in it. So if something grows in this agar, you know what genus it is. As mentioned already, encapsulated bacteria can be particularly concerning for certain individuals with predispositions. A patient that has had their spleen removed, rupture due to an automotive accident or mononucleosis disease, or have chronic sickle cell disease are at higher risk for developing meningococcus infections. Though both species ferment glucose, only N. meningitidis also ferments maltose. This could possibly be used to differentiate between them. It is also called kidney shape under the microscope. These are mostly low yield details, but they may appear on a quiz question, though not very clinically relevant. Gonorrhea causing Neisseria, on the other hand, don't have a capsule. There is no increased risk on this disease in patients with complement deficiency or with asplenia compared to other bugs. However, without a proper vaccine and with around 50% of men and 10% of women being asymptomatic when infected, this helps explain why this particular STD is so prevalent in the Western world. This module was short enough you shouldn't require a full review. The main takeaways are to be familiar with the presentations of different causes of meningitis and STDs and know how to separate these from other meningitis cases or genital diseases. Be on the lookout for rare presentations such as Fitzhugh Curtis and Waterhouse Friedrichsen, which cause adrenal and liver disease. C5 deficiency and asplenia patients are often a red flag for Neisseria infections. The last tier in this module will cover treatments.